So I'm a long time user of i3. I used i3 for years and years. It's one of my favorite window managers of all time. It is a spectacular way of getting your stuff done simply because it's so simple. You can obviously make it more complicated, but it's one of those window managers that you can configure it in just a, you know, 10, 15 minutes and just be on your way. You don't have to add a lot of frills to it. And it's just very, very good. Also, by far it has the best documentation of any window manager or Wayland compositor to to this day it has not been beaten. So i3 is one of my favorites and honestly I kind of miss it. And one of the things that I miss about it is the ability to have tabbed windows. Now you can use something like tabbed from the suckless guys to do some of this stuff but really what I want is it to be built into my Wayland compositor or the window manager that I'm using. Now I consistently underestimate Hyperland because the developer behind this and the probably the development team, they just have all the features. I'm I'm constantly surprised. So I did not know that Hyperland has the ability to have i3 style tabs. It does. Actually, let me show you what this looks like. So this is my i3 configuration file, and as you can see, I have tabs up here. Like these are these are tabs just like i3 has them now they're not quite as customizable as i3 because you can only have the bar at the top so that's my biggest complaint let's just you know this would not be a matte video without some complaints so we'll just say that but overall this is spectacular and today i want to show you how to set this up so the first thing you're going to need to do is have a group section in your configuration file now mine's going to look a little bit differently sim simply because i have my configuration file modularized so you just put this in your hyperland.conf and you'd then have groups available to you. There's one other section we'll have to cover, which is key bindings, but we'll get there here in just a second. So you'll need the group section. These control the borders of the group. You can then have your configuration for the group bar, which is this part here. It tells you whether or not you want it. So you can turn it on or off. You can tell it what font to use, the font size, if it uses gradients or not, which I have it set up as true. And it gives you the opportunity to set the height. And then it lets you set the colors for that. Now I have this stuff set up for, with my pie wall colors, which doesn't always work out. You guys can actually see there's not a lot of contrast with this particular wallpaper that I'm using. But that just is just the, the luck of the draw sometimes with pie wall. But overall, this is how you'd set up groups. You put this in your configuration file. I'll put an, a, a link to this or uh, the text to this in the description below. So you can actually put this right in your configuration file if you want. It, it does accept RGBA color codes here where these variables are. So if you're not using pie wall, you'll have to have something like that. You can get those from your your configuration file probably and get the like the format of them. So that's pretty easy. It's, it's something like RGBA parentheses and then the code of the the hex that you want to use it also includes transparency so if you wanted these to be transparent you could do that as well so that's the first part of it the other part we need is the the bindings for actually doing this stuff and that's what these things here are so so for example i have a toggle group page so let me actually go to a new workspace here and open up a terminal and let's say I wanted to create groups. I do super U and that would bring that bar up there at the top. And then any any windows I add to this. So let's say I add a browser. It would add that to a tab of this particular group. If I wanted to add another terminal or if I wanted to say add GIMP, I could add GIMP here right to this as a tab inside of this group. Now, there are other things that I could do. So, so let's say that I don't want to add the next window that I open to this particular group. How would I do that? Well, I have a key binding that locks the group. So basically what this does is it prevents any new windows from being added. So in my key binding for that is super I. You'll notice that the colors of the group bar change. So if I open up a terminal now, it'll actually appear outside of the group. Now I also have a key binding to add to a group, but I have to go back over here and hit super I again to unlock it. And then I, I could obviously use key bindings to move back and forth between windows, but mouse habits. Uh, I do super alt and then H that will actually add this window to this particular group. Now, 
you can see all these key bindings right here. These are the dispatchers that you'll need. You'll need toggle group, change group active back and forth. So right now I have these set as two of the Vim keys and the alt key. That way I can go back and forth between my, my tabs with alt and H and alt and L. So back and forth, back and forth I go. So there's that. I can also lock the active group, like I said, with super I. I can also move into group with various mod and alt keys. Let's say I wanted to move this particular window outside of the group. I do mod, alt, and then the letter U. That would move that outside of the, the group. If I wanted to move it back into that group, I do mod, alt, H but I'd have to make sure that this was unlocked. So I have to go back here and hit super I and then mod shift, mod alt and H would do back in there. And I'm going to lock that again. So it's a little bit more complicated than the tab groups in I3 simply because in, in I3 tabs are a default function. They're in the configuration file right from the get go. You can obviously do more with them and you find that stuff in the configuration file, but out of the box, Tabs are basically just a layout in i3. You sw similar to like what you'd get in Qtile with the monocle layout, same in Xmonad with the monocle layout, where everything's just kind of stacked on top of each other, right? With Hyperland, you have to build it in, basically build it in yourself by including the keybinds and that group section that I showed you earlier, which again looks like this. So that is, those are groups, or as I call them, tabs in Hyperland. This is fantastic. I love this thing. It, I've been using, I discovered it yesterday as I record this and I've been using it like freaking crazy. Every window that I have has a tab attached to it now. You know, whether it's a terminal or say for example, right now I have OBS right here in front of me and my 27 inch monitor, which is my you know side monitor. I also have Audacity on the same monitor, but just as part of another tab. They, they're, no, usually I have to take up a whole nother monitor for that. It's just like, this is my, one of my favorite parts of i3 and it's on Hyperland, that's fantastic. So if you are interested in i3 style tabs on Hyperland, this was how to do it. If you have questions on any of this setup or whatever, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them. If you have any other thoughts, comments down there as well. If you want to follow me on Mastodon, that link will be in the video description. If you want to support me on Patreon, you can do so at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. There you'll get a weekly exclusive podcast where I'll just sit in front of this microphone and yap at you for about 15 minutes or so. I have a new one coming out in the next couple of days. So if that's something that you're interested in, make sure you check that out. You can get that on YouTube as well by hitting this, the join button down below. Uh, you, thanks everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. Thank you so very much. If you want to get some merch that's available at shop.thegliscast.org thanks everybody for watching i hope you have a wonderful day i'll see you next time